number three radio program on a Tuesday afternoon. Hope your Memorial Day weekend went fine as we chat to you about what's going on as far as the world of sports is concerned. Eddie, Colin, and the crew, Mad Dog Unleashed, Great Serious XM 82. Let me do a couple little notes here around the horn and sports, and then we'll get right back to your calls, nine lines, and give you a chance. One, uh, what a job by Justin Verlander yesterday. The Astros had a terrible loss on Sunday uh, to Cleveland. Had an 8-3 lead in the bottom of the ninth inning in Cleveland, and then later on, a lead in extra innings. But 8-3, bottom of the ninth. And that man again, Ken Giles, who never can be trusted to close a big game, uh, got bombed, gave up runs. He couldn't get the big out with 17 pitch at bat. Gave up the five runs. The Indians then came back in extra innings on a solo home run by Alonzo. And then won a game a little later on. Uh, Jeff Gordon hit a home run uh, off, um, off Peacock. That's a great win. And that was a terrible loss for Houston. And for Houston to lose that kind of game, was a little demoralizing. So what happens? They go to Yankee Stadium the next afternoon. This is a day game on uh, Sunday. They go to Yankee Stadium the next afternoon, and Verlander takes the hill, and they can't hit him. And they go out there and they bury the Yankees 5-1 to one and win the game. And Verlander once again just mows the Yankees down uh, left and right. In the last couple years now, he has killed the Yankees in big spots. Twice in the postseason. That was a big game yesterday. He was terrific there earlier in the year in Houston uh, when they played the Yankees in that four-game series. It was a good win for Verlander. Good st- a good job by the Astros the day game yesterday. You saw that uh, McCullers went crazy about Gurriel, who made a big error for him the other day in the ninth inning and McCullers was very demonstrative on the mound. He noticed how Altuve in the dugout took uh, McCullers aside and basically said that's a no-go here. Uh, it was very interesting. The McCullers after the game uh, very big apology in the post game. You know, it was a bad job on my part, immature, blah, blah, blah. Nice job all the way around as far as the Astros are concerned. Astros, we need a closer and the Yankees we need a starting pitcher. I mean, that's essentially where we are with those two teams as we head here in baseball a uh, big, big time of the year. I uh, I did not like the Rizzo slide. Baseball came out today and said the umpires made a mistake. They went the replay on that slide, and somehow they said it was legal. Um, this is yesterday, Cubs Pirates in Pittsburgh uh, on a play, grounded to the left side of the infield. They got a force at the plate. The catcher, um, who wasn't Cervelli, uh, I forget who it was, Diaz, I think it was, uh, came out of the uh, home plate area and threw to first base, and Rizzo went out of his way and out of the baseline and late to slide into him. I said it was debatable on TV. I didn't like it. Uh, baseball said today they didn't like it at all. So from that standpoint, uh, Rizzo, I'm not going to get suspended or anything, but baseball said that we made a mistake with the Rizzo slide. I mean, there's a do's and a don'ts. I mean, I know Madden went to Rizzo's defense. Uh, that was a legal play, blah, blah, blah. Boy, I think if somebody did that to Wilson Contreras, Joe would be on a soapbox for about a month telling you how out of line it was that my guy got hurt. So uh, now it's almost like Pat Raleigh when he was on the Lakers and, you know, Rambus was getting clotheslined by McHale. Pat had a major issue with it. And then when the Knicks were doing it to everybody in sight when he was coaching the Knicks, he loved it. Oh, it's hard basketball. So it's the same kind of thing uh, with these managers with, with players like that. Syndergaard is out a while now. Got a sprained ligament in his th- pitching finger, uh, his index finger, uh, right hand. Uh, the Mets can't get out of their own way. Back to a game over 500 after a 12-2 and two start. And no Syndergaard now for a while. So we keep that in mind. NBA, of course, we've been all over today. Today with the two games, of course, the seventh games this past weekend. Uh, the Cav game with Boston was one of the worst Game 7s I've ever witnessed. And I've been watching Game 7s in the NBA since probably 19, closely as a fan, since 1969-70 when the Knicks uh, beat the Lakers, which was another awful Game 7 besides Willis Reed in that seventh game at New York. Uh, and that was in 50 years of watching, 48 years of watching NBA basketball in big spots. I can't recall a worse Game 7 myself. That game was so bad, throwing bricks up, awful. Um, and the Cavs did what they had to do one the game. LeBron, of course, uh, played his typical LeBron self in a big spot, especially in the Eastern Conference. He played phenomenally in the game. Uh, but he wasn't the reason why they won. They won the game because Boston was inept. Uh, Cleveland only scored 87 points. And as Brad Stevens said after the game, you know, God, let's take it easy. I mean, we held them less than 103 of the last four games, for crying out loud. Uh, the bottom line is, is that, and, that's, and they lost three of those four. Bottom line is, uh, the Celtics shot the ball horrifically. Uh, they 
They did not shoot the ball well from three. Rogier was terrible. Marcus Smart was terrible. None of them can make shots in big spots. And they got offensive rebounds. They missed shots. Rogier was 0 for 10. Um, Smart was 1 for 10. Jalen Brown was terrible. Awful. And that's why the Cavs, to me, the biggest reason, that and a Jeff, Brown ba- a Jeff Green basket, 541 left, down one after the Jason Tatum five-point explosion in a 20-second period there. Uh, late in the fourth quarter, Green came back and made a three right in front of Boston's bench. 19 points in a game for Green. Thompson played well, too, but Green played really well and made a huge basket. Good for him. Cavaliers in the final. Warriors, we've discussed all day. Uh, you're going to have to convince America and convince me to sit there right away and get into that series. You know, Obviously, I'm going to watch it the first game, but uh, I am not going to go into this NBA final with any kind of anticipation whatsoever. Uh, that, that NBA final, they're going to have a tough selling job. But we're not going to Cleveland for any third game like we've done the last two years. Uh, that NBA final, this show at least, that NBA final is going to have a very, very tough selling point to the serious sports fan. Uh, you know, to the casual fan who just knows names, LeBron, Golden State, that will do okay. But to the serious sports fan, uh, you and me and everybody else who listens to this show, that's going to be a tough sell because nobody's going to go out there and believe in Cleveland. They're going to have to win a game minimum and probably do a little more than that but win a game early in Golden State to make us believe that uh, a, 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 a gargantuan upset is possible and I don't see that happening I, I really don't I you know again the popular pick will be the Warriors in five uh, based on the fact that maybe you give Cleveland a game at home I could see the Warriors in a sweep uh, I think Cleveland did a phenomenal job getting here, uh, but I, I don't see him going any further. I also can see the Warriors playing better now, relaxed. They got out of this series, that you know, against the Rockets when they didn't uh, had to win a couple of elimination games. Maybe Ego Dallo eventually will come back and play. So I, I could see actually Golden State taking it easy now and playing a little better, a little more loosey goosey, uh, and playing a little better. We'll have to wait and see. I would be shocked though uh, if this series has any length to it. That's going to be a tough selling job for the NBA uh, to sell Cavs Warriors in. Uh, you know, uh, as a as sequels don't work anyway, especially when you start getting deep in a sequel. Sequels, you know, sequel one, sequel two, Godfather two won an Oscar. Godfather three stunk. Uh, Cleveland Golden State, God, uh, see, the, um, the second one was the best movie, won the Oscar when Cleveland won. The third one was a, was a bore, and this year I think it's going to be the same scenario. With that, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, they're going to have to prove to us, though, Cleveland, that they can play with the Warriors without Kyrie Irving. And they had him last year and lost in five. They don't have him this year. I, I don't see it. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see on that. I understand that the Warriors aren't quite as in sync as they were a year ago. That that I would agree with you on. A little more wear and tear on them. Uh, you know, they're a little more vulnerable, a little more the aura. You got hurt a little bit in this Houston series. So I will agree with that. But uh, the Cavs are not nearly as good without Kyrie. They don't get that second guy, so we shall see. Uh, the NHL, of course, had a riveting game one. We'll see if they can keep it going here. That was a tremendous first game. Uh, Capitals, obviously, going to need to win game two. Vegas seems to be and continues to be a very opportunistic and a team that just uh, figures out a way to do what they have to do to win these games. You know, um, whether it's uh, a power play, getting scored, uh, scoring first, whether it's scoring quickly after you're scored upon, whether it's a non referee call, which is what occurred last night, which tied the game up in the third period. Whatever it might be, uh, they seem to be very good uh, this uh, Santa, that uh, this Vegas team of adapting to whatever the circumstances. And the Capitals played well last night. Obviously, probably not great defensively, but many a chances. Um, they had a chance in the last 30 seconds. Uh, I wouldn't write, and the Capitals have faced a lot of adversity here in the postseason and responded, but we'll see now how they respond to this second game, which is tomorrow night. Then there's two days off before they get to a game three. Gary Bettman did say, by the way, the expansion protocol about how they're going to... Um, yeah, basically field expansion teams and how they're going to get their rosters set will not change based on Vegas. So the idea that they're a little embarrassed because Vegas is so good so soon based on their very liberal expansion scenario for the uh, team coming in, they can basically have the pick of the litter. That will not change for Seattle when Seattle becomes the 32nd team in the NHL, which will occur maybe not in June, but it will occur, I think, by the end of the year. Seattle's going to get a team next. Uh, in the National Hockey League. So those are the three things I wanted to get to here on this busy day. Now I want to get to you, and here's Chris in Georgia, and he says hello, and he's on Mad Dog Unleashed. Christopher, good afternoon. How are you today? What do you have? Yes, Chris, take it away, buddy. What's on your mind? 
What do you have? Mad Dog. Yes. Hey, Chris, how you doing, buddy? Okay, buddy, what's happening now? Why are you busted on Canel? Canel flying out Monday. Canel is one of the top, top radio guys I've ever heard in my life. The guy's phenomenal. You were talking about busting his chops about Monday not flying up. If he calls on a satellite phone, I'd listen to him. Uh, good. Uh, you know, listen, we want that, but we, we would like Dan uh, to make a commitment to Steve. Steve has made the commitment to Dan out of necessity. Uh, we would like Dan to make a commitment to Steve, and when he's going to be in town anyway, get the early flight Monday instead of the late flight. Nobody cares about his podcast when he listens. Get the morning uh-huh. flight instead of the uh, Do the podcast from here in front of six people. Uh, don't, guys, uh, that's what we need him to do. You may continue. Go that ahead. guy's a rock star. I do have a question, though. Let me ask you this. If Cleveland somehow takes down Golden State, right. which I find very unlikely, would you find that a better accomplishment than when they came back down from one to three? Uh, you know, I might. Yep. Because a couple of years ago, they were, you know, the Golden State didn't have Durant and they had Irving. So I might. Here's DJ in Long Island, New York. Got a chance. DJ, it's your turn. How are you today, Pat? Okay. Hey, dog. How you doing? All right, DJ. I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? Good. Couple of points on both series. I think you're taking it a little too easy on these teams. Number one, you were talking about choking like a dog. Here's what choking like a dog is. When you're 10-0 and at home in the playoffs, and each game leading up to game seven, you destroyed the other team on your home floor, and then you come up with that performance in game seven, that's choking like a dog. Yeah, I, it is a it is a seventh game with a young team, but they were horrific in the game, and they shot horrifically. They were not coached properly in the game. They should have gotten the free throw line in the fourth quarter. He's got to take some hits for that, and that was more about Boston losing than it was about LeBron winning, so I do agree with you on that. Yeah, so let's remember that before we put Brad Stevens, uh, you, before we make him, okay, that's a choke. Now, I, I don't yeah, disagree. He other- didn't do a good job in that game. Go ahead. Next. Go ahead. On to the other series. Listen, this is Paul's. He's got a play who's in front of you. Now, you're going to tell me that this, this Houston team, okay, they were up 17 points 15. after the first quarter of game six. Oh, game six. And you got James Harden is supposed to be the MVP of the league, and you can't take that game home? And then they're up 11 points at home in a raucous crowd in game seven, and they come up with that performance? That, 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 you gotta, you gotta be all over the Rockets. I am, I am putting this in. I am putting. Uh, no, DJ. We did talk about this earlier today. I'm putting this in context. Before the series began, I did not think the Rockets would do any better than maybe winning a couple of games, and I did not think they'd go back to Houston two two. So the fact that they took a 3-2 lead, I have to put this in context. I just can't bail out now after I said before the series began, the Rockets would really show me something if they made the Warriors sweat. Well, that's exactly what they did. Yeah. And then they didn't have... They showed, Paul. Me something. they showed me their dogs. They were up 17 points after the after quarter one. In game six, the, the Warriors were staring at each other. They looked like they, they were about to run out of the building. Uh, and they blew that lead. They got outscored 62 to 25. Are you crazy? I, I understand. I, I, I completely collapsed. I, I, I think a better way to look at it is we have put so much attention on Game 7. Maybe we should have put a little more attention on Game 6. Because they played great in the first half of Game 6 until the last 3-4 minutes. They had the Warriors in a lot of trouble. They had the crowd nervous. Uh, the Rockets were really flying. The Rockets felt very good about themselves. They were playing that game off um, off, uh, off, two wins in a row. So the Warriors, are Lord, they were, don't forget, they were up 2-1. They were playing that game off two wins in a row. Uh, they, had the, they had the Warriors very, very tight in that second quarter of Game 6 on Saturday night. And we have not paid a lot of attention to that. So I think that is a, I think that's a very, very fair point. Dave in Manhattan, and he's with us here on Mad Dog Unleashed. Dave, good afternoon. How are you today? Hey, good afternoon, dog. What's going on? All right, David. Thank you. Now, let me hear what's happening. Fire away. Yeah. I mean, for you uh, to give Harden a pass, I'm shocked. Uh, I don't know what game you were watching last night. Right. 
But on one hand, you're telling me that LeBron, you know, you expect 35 and 40 minutes. That's what he averages in big games, and he's the best in basketball. Right. Harden, is, you know, Harden is a stat guy, whatever it is. He, he uh, compiles. But to give him a pass, for him not to hustle, for him not to, to throw a pass with, with meaning in the fourth quarter of game seven, how do, how do, how do you let that go, dog? I'm upset at you. Well, because uh, first off, I have picked on Harden a lot. I've been all over Harden. I've fought with uh, Jeff Van Gundy about Harden. I've always told you he's overrated. And, you know, he did have 32 points in the game. Uh, He shot it badly, but he did have 32 points in the game. He was 2 for 13 from 3. 